Now that we know how to measure, let's take a look at one of the ways to analyze our results. That's available in the upper right hand corner from our print quality scoring system. If we look, we see two numbers. The number on the left is called the compliance. The number on the right is the score. This particular job has four colors where each of the colors has a delta E tolerance of 2.0. I see that I've made two measurements of each color in this job, meaning maybe I took one measurement from each side of the web. Now, each one of those measurements was within that tolerance of two. And if I look in the upper right hand corner of each graph, I can see my delta E averages between those two measurements. In this case, I see four green check marks, meaning everything I measured was within our tolerance limit of 2.0. That's why we see a 100% rate of compliance. What it means is that every measurement I made was in spec. Now with eight total measurements, had one failed or two failed, we would see the compliance go down by the percent of passing measurements versus the total measurements. Now, the reason we go beyond this is because you can have a lot of measurements the way we see here that are all technically passing your delta E tolerance limit, but we don't have a good idea of how close they are to going out of tolerance or how close they are on the other end to being a perfect color match. To do this, we use a number over on the right called the score. The score is determined by looking at the average delta E of each measurement made compared to the tolerance limit and calculating the distance between going out of spec or being a perfect match. As I look around these colors, I see that my first color had a delta E average of 148. My second color in the upper right had 185 delta E average. In the lower left, my 2738 had a delta E average of 1.82. And in the lower right, my gray had a delta E average of 1.65. Now in consideration of my tolerance being 2.0, I want to gauge where I am with those average delta E's compared to the color my customer is hoping will deliver. In this case, we see a score here of 58%. We can click on this scoring window to get a better idea of what's happening. As we open this view, we see in the top the measurement score, in the center our compliance compared to our quality, and at the bottom our compliance compared to the quality level. If we click on our colors in the spot solid section in the middle, we can then review each color individually. So what I see here are each of my delta E averages, my tolerances, the number that I've measured, the number that have failed, and how close my colors were to being perfect, reaching my tolerance, which isn't in the center, or being twice my tolerance, which would represent being all the way on the right. So to explain that again, if I had a perfect 0.0, .0 delta E color difference, my quality level would be 100%. As that goes down, as I approach my tolerance of 2.0, the quality level decreases to about 50% once you are exactly at your tolerance limit, in this case, 2.0. Should your color accuracy drift even wider than that, you may, uh, you may observe a delta E of three, three and a half, or four, which you would notice the quality then continue to decrease until you hit a quality level of zero, which is represented by two times your tolerance. So should you reach a delta E of four, you would have a particular attribute quality on that color at zero, which would then get averaged in with the other colors of your job and then compared to the compliance rate. The print quality scoring system is a handy tool to use to monitor your job performance sequence over sequence. You can very quickly tell your compliance, that's what you're used to of how many things are passing or failing, but you can also very quickly gauge how close you are to being perfectly accurate or reaching your tolerance or exceeding beyond. You can always click on it for more details and dig into the individual measurements as needed.